Welcome back. We're in the middle of a discussion about first-time guests. And last time we learned that the average person who comes to your church for the first time will make up their mind within the first seven minutes. And so remember, a lot of times before the first song has ever started, and definitely before you as the speaker or the preacher ever begin your sermon, people have made up their minds. And so in the last session, we looked at that area of first contact, what I called from the street to the seat. We talked about how are people greeted, how are they directed, how are they treated, and how are they seated. And I hope you had a great discussion about little things you could do to improve in each of those areas. Well, if you recall from last time, we left our first-time guest couple sitting in the auditorium. They are now in that auditorium, and they're waiting for the service to start, or they're going to experience the service. So I'm at letter B in your notes, which is the second area of moving someone from first-time guest to second-time guest. And the second area relates to during the service, and the fill-in is connection card. Now, what I will not get into in this seminar is actually what you do in your service. What songs do you sing and what uh, messages do you deliver? In fact, we have another system where we focus on the worship planning system. And I talk about various things about how you might plan a service and how you might even plan a sermon series that might be attractive to first-time guests. But for our purposes in this seminar, it's all about what is the one thing you want a first-time guest to do when they're sitting in your service. And from the system perspective, it is you want them to complete a connection card. Now, you'll notice I call it a connection card. Perhaps a more generic term for this might be a communication card. What I don't want to call it, if you remember, is I don't want to call it a, v v a, a visitor card because that's a dirty word. So this is not a visitor card. This is not a visitor form. In fact, I'm going to show you that one of the best ways to get your guest to complete their connection card is to ensure that every person completes a connection card. So it's not just for your guest. It is for everybody in your church. And I'll talk about that even in later sessions uh, for you. But for our purposes, we want to talk about that connection card and how do you get a first-time guest to share with you their information. Because the truth is, if you do not have that information, if you don't have the minimal contact info like name and email address or address, or maybe even they're willing to share a, a cell number with you, if you don't have that basic contact information, then it is impossible for you to follow up with those first-time guests. Now, I, I will tell you, at The Journey, we are laser-focused on this. And when I work with my coaching participants in the Assimilation Coaching Network and, and some of my other advanced coaching networks, we have become fanatics about this connection card. In fact, we've almost developed what we would call a connection cardology, sort of a, a methodology of how you do this connection card. And, and we're always tweaking our connection cards. We're playing with the color. We're playing with the size. We're playing with the layout of the information on the card. And, and we're measuring. I mean, like someone might measure a basketball game or a football game about how many people complete this part of the card. If we change it this way, will they complete more of the card? And so what you're seeing in the supplemental resources with this seminar is you're seeing the best connection card that we have to date. And we keep this constantly updated. But you won't be able to see this perhaps on camera, but this is basically a connection card. And it is a small card like this that goes inside everyone's program. And then at a certain point inside of the message, we ask people to take out this card and to fill it out and then turn it in with the offering. Now this is printed, you, you won't be able to tell again uh, exactly from your view or if you're just listening to this, you won't be able to tell, but it's printed on cardstock. In other words, if I'm filling out this card with my pen, my pen is not gonna poke through like it might on regular paper. So you can test out different weights, and I don't know exactly what weight this one is I have here, but it's definitely like a postcard that you would buy at the, uh, the U.S. Post Office or the Postal Service in your country. And it's just a little heavier. It's convenient for me to fill out. It doesn't bend as readily as regular traditional paper. And then we're able to print these in-house, and we've actually found no difference as to whether you print them full color or just in black and white like the one I have here. So by all means, black and white is fine. And we actually print them on a regular sheet of paper and we print them three up. 
And so here's connection card one, two, and three, and then you can simply cut these cards and put it inside your program. And I've tested various sizes. I've, I've tested a smaller card. I've tested a wider card. I've tested a narrow card. But I've basically settled on this three up pattern as the most effective card. Now, generally speaking, the churches I coach, they can get anywhere from 75 to 90% of the people in their congregation to fill out their connection card. And again, this is the entire congregation filling out the card, and I'll talk about that in more detail in just a moment. But the idea is if you get everybody in your church to fill out a card, then your first-time guest will feel comfortable completing the card. So because I like the card, and I like it inside the bulletin or inside the program, let me tell you a few things that are very difficult to use. In the past, there has been this guest registration book. And this is often a, uh, a little book that sits at the end of each aisle or each pew. And then people would pass that down the aisle and they would ask the guest to take the book and to sign in. It's sort of like a, a guest log, if you will, that is passed down each of the aisles and guests complete it. Well, there's a lot of problems with that. Number one is it's not always the most user-friendly. Number two is you, everybody's information, particularly if they're at the beginning of the row, it's now public to everybody who is on down the row. Uh, it's very hard to maintain the quality of that. Perhaps uh, children during the service will write in the book, or maybe you forget to take out the, the bad pages from the book or the used pages. But then if all of your guests are sitting in one aisle and there's seven or eight people that need to fill out that book, it may never make its way all the way down the aisle. And the other aisles where there's no guest, they're done and they're ready to move on in the service. So I would avoid using that kind of guest book. I would also avoid calling this card a visitor card or a guest card. Because the card is for more than just your guest, as you will see later on. It can be used by your church. It's actually a spiritual growth card, but we call it a connection card. And then I don't like putting the card in the back of the seats in front of you. Sort of that pew rack that a lot of churches might have, or even if you have nice comfy seats, there's often a little uh, pocket that you can put this in. And a lot of people like to put it in that pocket, and then they like to put a pen there with it, or a little pencil, like a little golf course pencil, there with it. And there's a lot of problems with that, too. I mean, pencils get broken. They rarely get traded out. The pens go dead, and may, maybe you don't notice for months. And then these cards get ruffled because people will put their feet on their card, or they'll get bent as people are going in and out of the aisles. And uh, then people have this belief that if it's in the back of that pew rack, then it belongs to the church. But if you put the card inside the program or the bulletin, they believe it's theirs. So you want them to think of the card as their card. This is their card that they're going to complete, and it's protected inside that program. Now, you may say, Nelson, you weren't kidding. You, you really take these cards seriously. Well, you're exactly right. I do take these cards very seriously because I know if I don't get a connection card on a first-time guest who comes to our church, then I have no ability to follow up with that person. And if I can't follow up with them, the chances of them coming back for a second time are seriously diminished. You know, I have an older brother who is a professional salesperson. He actually sells limousines. And I asked him one time, I said, Mike, what's the difference between the, the high-performing salespeople and, and the low-performing salespeople? And uh, he said about a million dollars a year, but that's another story. I said, no, no, just practically what's the difference? He says, well, the, the high-performing salespeople, we follow up, we follow up, we follow up. The low-performing salespeople, they make one call, and if the client says no, they move on to somebody else. We say, I really believe in follow-up. In fact, we're going to get into some follow-up uh, practices that I want you to adopt in your church. But before you can actually follow up, you have to get the contact info. And you have to get that in a comfortable, easy-to-share Man, uh, way. Uh, one last thought on this before we go into your notes. I like printing my connection card in-house. And uh, you have my sample, and you can take that and create your own connection card for use at your church. But one of the reasons I like to print it in-house is I have yet to find an off-the-shelf card that is easy to complete. You know, a lot of times the spaces are really small. You know, they barely have room for someone who has a long last name or a long first name to, to write their name. 
they, they often will have a little tiny line for an email address, but more and more people have these long email address, particularly if it's like first name dot last name at and then the name of your business with your website. So you wanna have plenty of space and then oftentimes they're really crowded and they're often printed on cheap paper that your pen or pencil will poke through. So I think a lot about these areas because someone's eternity may hang on whether or not they fill out this connection card. So let, let's talk about how it works. I give you uh, three connection card steps in your program or in your notes. Number one is everyone completes a card each week. Everyone completes a card each week. Now let's talk about that. So first of all, I mean everyone. So the card is inside of everyone's bulletin. So this card is designed so that it's about the size of the average bulletin. It fits inside of the bulletin. And just further on that, you should know that on the outside of the bulletin, we clip a pen that is uh, to each of the bulletins. So we're giving them the pen, the bulletin, and then inside that bulletin, they have a set of message notes that they can follow along with my teaching. They have an offering envelope that's in the stewardship seminar because if you have offering envelopes in the pew rack, people think that's the church's offering envelope. If it's in their bulletin, it's theirs and they're more likely to use it. But again, you'll have to see the stewardship seminar for that. But then also you have this connection card. So bulletin, pen, connection card. This is what everyone receives when they walk in. So you gotta make sure your greeters give everyone a bulletin with a connection card inside of it when they come in. And then we're asking everyone to fill out a connection card and they do it every week. So one of the things you can do is you can train your members, your regular attenders, to fill out your connection card. And this may take you three or four months or maybe even six months to get it into your culture, but if you follow along with that connection card script that we have in the resource area, and you deliver that in your hosting time with the same precision as I lay it out in the script, you will find very quickly that your regular attenders and members will fill out the card. In fact, when you go to that script, and I don't have time to go into it all right now, but maybe it's something you want to read or study after this session. If you go into that script, you'll notice after the general welcome to the church, it says, everyone look inside your program, find your connection card. Go ahead and take that pen that we gave you and start filling out your connection card. If you're a regular attender or member, all you need to do is fill out your name and email unless some of your information has changed. But if you are a first time guest with us today, we ask you to complete as much information on the front of the connection card as you feel comfortable sharing. And then as you work your way down the card, be sure you check that box that says first or second time guest. At the bottom of the card, you'll notice a question. How did you hear about the Journey Church? We'd love to know how you heard. Maybe a friend invited you. You could write their name right there. Maybe you got something in the mail. Maybe you saw our church driving by. Whatever it is, you, we would love to know how you, as a first-time guest, heard about our church. That is just a portion of a longer welcome script that we use to get everyone to fill out their card. In fact, in the assimilation coaching, we have an entire session on how to effectively use the communication card, both in the opening hosting at your church, as well as in the collection of the cards at the end of your worship service. And both of those are very important. And I would encourage you to study those scripts. I would encourage those of you that are teaching pastors or you do the hosting or welcome on Sunday to take this script in its entirety, word for word, and learn it and use it inside of your church. And as you do, you can get to the point where everyone completes a card every week. And you'll see 70, 80, or even 90% of your church over time fill out the card every week. So if you think about it, if everyone's filling out their card, it makes it comfortable for your first time guests to fill out the card. So if you use that script the way that I've given you, the first part of that script encourages the regular attenders and members to fill out their card. Well, at that point, your first time guests may still be just a little uncomfortable about giving you their information, but they look around and everybody in the church is filling out the card. So through positive peer pressure, they begin to fill out their card as well. And then using my script from your stage or from the pulpit, you create a comfortable environment where people can share, if you remember those words, as much information as you feel comfortable sharing. And we've tested this over and over and over. And what you have is the exact script 
that uh, we use at our church and I've used to coach many other churches. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how to use the connection card, and I go into a lot more detail in the assimilation coaching. But if you get the idea of everyone completes a card each week and try that connection card script to make that work inside of your church. So we're looking at during the service, the connection card. So everyone completes the card every week. And then number two, everyone places the card in with the offering. You want to think about now how you're going to collect the connection cards. So generally speaking, we have everyone complete the connection cards 15 to 20 minutes into the service. Then perhaps there's some additional music and then the sermon itself. And then at the end of the service, we receive the offering. Now, you may receive the offering in the middle or you may receive it at the end. And I would encourage you to think about where you receive the offering, not just for the sake of the offering, but also for the sake of the connection card. But then people can turn it in during the offering time. And we will tell them, and you will see this in the opening connection card script and the hosting, or excuse me, and the closing connection card script, that we tell them to hold on to this card because you'll turn it in during the offering. Then in the closing script, we give them a two-minute warning to say, in just a moment, we're going to be receiving the offering, so you turn this card in at that time. Now, what's interesting about this is now a first-time guest has something to give during the offering time which again deals with another objection that first-time guests have, which is, what do I do during the offering time? I mean, they may choose to give, and by all means, if they choose to give, they have the opportunity to do it. But even if they don't, they don't have to feel weird during that offering time because they turn in their connection card. And you've got to collect it anyway. And it's much better to collect the card in the service when everybody is turning in the card than it is to say things like, bring this card to our guest table. I'm all for a guest table. We'll get to that in a few minutes, maybe even in our next session. But I'm all for having a guest table. I'm all for giving a guest a free gift. But don't make it dependent on them bringing that card to the table because, again, most people won't. But most people will turn it in with the offering. So everyone, including your regular attenders and members and your first-time guest, they put the card in the offering. Now, for some of you, this may mean you need bigger offering receptacles. Maybe you need a, a, a basket or maybe you need a, a bucket instead of just a, a flat tray to receive the offering because now you're going to be receiving all of these connection cards. Be more on connection card next steps and things like that when we get to second time guests. But for now, everyone completes a card. Everyone places the card in with the offering. And then number three, everyone has a next step to take each week. So your regular attenders and members, they have some next steps. Second-time guests have some next steps. We'll deal with that in a later session. But for your first-time guest, they have a next step to take by filling out this card, and they just might take some spiritual next steps on the back of the card. The key point here that I want to raise is that you have to find an easy, comfortable way for people to share their information with you because if you don't receive it, if you don't get the information properly, then you're not going to be able to do any follow-up. So review this connection card script. Use it exactly like I tell you to use it. Look at those samples that we have in with these files and practice it, practice it, practice it. Three, four, maybe even six months to get it into your culture. And then you'll actually begin to realize later that this is a spiritual growth tool. Because 90% or 99% of the people filling out the card are regular attenders and members. So they're using this card in very profound spiritual ways. But it also helps you when it comes to your first-time guest. And then, of course, it helps you with your second-time guest. But that's during the service, your connection card. Now, I want to also cover in this session what happens after the service. Now, they're still on site. They, uh, the service has completed. They've filled out their connection card. They've turned in their connection card. Now the service is dismissing, and that takes us to C, which is post-service. Post-service. Now, when it comes to post-service, there's two areas you want to focus on. The first area is what I call the free book. I want to encourage you to give every first-time guest who comes to your church a free book. And this, this is a book that you have selected to be most helpful to first-time guests who come to your church. So remember, when a first-time guest comes to your church for the first time, they often come because they're in transition, they're in trouble, or they're under tension. And so what book would best fit that mindset? What book would best help them? And, and I prefer a book. 
Uh, I prefer a book over, say, a f some kind of uh, free treat, like something you might eat, or a free t-shirt, like something you might wear. You can give that in addition to the book, but I want to give them something that if they engage it, it will help them move forward spiritually, perhaps even move to that place of trusting Jesus as their Savior and Lord, but definitely help them get a greater understanding about what God's doing in their life. In fact, I, I love the book idea so much, I wrote a book that's designed for this purpose. And if you would like to use the book that I wrote based on over 3,000 first-time guest prayer requests, and what I did is I looked at all these first-time guests we had at the journey. I took their top 10 prayer requests for when they come to the church for the first time, and then I wrote a book with 10 chapters that address each of those top 10 issues. And what I found in my coaching network is from around the world and across the United States, these are often the same prayer requests that your people have, your first-time guests have when they come to your church. But I, I put that book in their hand. And it's a substantial book. It's not, a, not a, a little flimsy book or something that looks like we only uh, got it for free or you know, printed it very cheaply. It's a quality book. And over and over, we hear that when people engage that book, it moves them closer to Christ and it shares the gospel and it might even lead them to Christ. And I, and I like giving them a substantial book because it's a gift. It's a gift that you want them to keep, you want them to engage. It's a way for you to show in honor and respect for those first-time guests. And so don't hesitate to spend five, six, seven, even ten dollars on a book that you can give to your first-time guest. Now we put some cool stuff in with that book. We put a letter for me that drives them to a survey that we would like them to complete, which is the same survey we use in follow-up, and you'll see that in future sessions. But that letter thanks them for coming. That letter invites them to fill out a survey. Now, again, they don't have to bring the connection card to the free book table to get it. They can just swing by the table and grab the book. It's on the honor system. But it's a very powerful way. And if you study that connection card script, you'll notice in the final hosting, we say, go ahead and drop your connection card in with the offering. And then by doing so, you can swing by the first time guest table on your way out and pick up this book by Pastor Nelson. And so this is a way to kind of say, you give us the card with the offering. And then that sort of qualifies you to go by and get the free book. Now, I will tell you, the first few times you give away the free book, probably all your members are going to go by there and get it, but just kind of see that as an investment of them. But over time, this book will be for your first-time guest. It's a very powerful way to show your appreciation for those in attendance. Then if you want to put bread or a t-shirt or like one church in Texas does, chips and salsa with the book, then that'll be just fine. But put something in their hands as they leave. Don't make them have to have a conversation. Don't make them have to turn anything in. Just let them take it and go if they like. Does it mean you won't have a greeter there? Does it mean you won't have somebody there keeping the supply of the books fresh? But it does mean that they can get it very quickly if they would like. Now, a second area of post-service relates to the free book table, but this is just simply your guest table or your resource table. Almost every church has some kind of resource table. Maybe you've got previous uh, messages and sermon series that were taught at the church. Maybe you've got a statement of beliefs. Maybe you've got other brochures that you've developed about the church. Well, in with all of this normal stuff that you have, think about the questions that first-time guests might have. They might have questions about what you believe, so make sure on the guest table you have a statement of belief. They may have questions about what does it mean to be a Christian? So I have a DVD on our guest table of a resource that I did called What Does It Mean to Be a Christian? Maybe they have questions about what kind of Bible do I need to use or how do I pray or why did you receive the Lord's Supper in the service or what do you believe about baptism? Unchurched people have a lot of questions about a church, so as you learn what those questions are, you develop resources at that table. Now, one of the most common things that first-time guests may want to take from a resource table is previous sermon series. So perhaps they enjoyed the sermon today and they want to get a series that you did a while back about being a good parent or about managing their money, getting out of debt, drawing close to God, studying the Bible, whatever it is. So you have these resources out and by all means, be generous with those resources. If someone can make a donation for that, that's fine. But if a first-time guest asks about a resource and then you tell them it's a $5 donation and they start to walk away, train your greeters to say, but you know, as our guest or as a gift to you, I want to just go ahead and give you this resource. That creates a culture of generosity, but also just a great welcoming culture inside of your church. So post-service, two areas, 
the free book for information about mine. You can see that in the, in the resources along with this seminar, but make sure it's a nice quality book that your first time guests can engage and move forward spiritually. And then also this guest table. And so in this session, we've moved them from the seat through the service, filling out their connection card to after the service, getting their free gift getting any questions they have about the church answered, and now they're back in their car and they're heading home. But they didn't leave you empty-handed. They left you with this connection card. So in our next session, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do you handle these connection cards? How do you follow up? So to start you thinking about that, at the end of the service, while everyone is leaving, when you have your counters going through the offering, sorting out the offering, uh, counting the offering. They're putting the offering in one stack and they're putting the connection cards in another stack. And then we have a separate set of database people, data entry people, who are taking those connection cards. They're sorting them, putting the first time guest on top, followed by the new believers, because we like to follow up with those new believers uh, as quickly as possible as well. And that again gets into the evangelism seminar. Then we have second time guest, and then we get into regular attenders and members. But as quickly as possible, we want to get the connection cards on our first and second time guest, and we want to get them into our follow-up process. And I have a very specific follow-up process that I want to teach you in the next session, and this is really going to help you, and it's going to be a little thing that you can do that will have a big impact on your church. So I'll see you back in the next session for follow-up.